Welcome back to the Zotac Season Finals. This is the first match in the winner's bracket. I'm Rifkin, joined today by Zombie Grub. You're watching Base Straight TV, spawning in the top right corner of the map from Mind Sanity, the Blue Terran player, Jakshi. He's currently up one in this series. In the bottom left, as the pink Protoss, it is Hurricane. So we kind of, we muttered a little bit about it between games, but we want, I really want to stress this point, guys. Like, Jokshi had some leads in that game, uh, he had some bad engagements, but a lot of this, a lot of the game I feel really reeled back to, like, Hurricane losing that third, and that's a situation where as a Protoss player, you kind of like, okay, I got all in now. But Hurricane decided to, no, macro out of it, kept trying to take a third, kept trying to take a fourth, he played that game out so well, and if there was, there's so few things to criticize on, because he took a lot of good engagements, I mean, the only thing I can think off the top of my head is like, yo, maybe get more God Mode Storms, <laughs> that's about it. Because what I really, really liked, and I think for Jai actually caused him a lot of trouble, was he was constantly making the right tech swaps, creating the right units to kind of counter what Jai was making. Like, if you see a Terran player make 500 Vikings, don't make another Colossus, make 7 Templar instead. That sort of thing. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I also think that his opener didn't really do a whole lot for him. We talked about the power of the Phoenix Colossus, and, you know, that one engagement really, like, cut that before it even really got to like to grow into that really unbeatable composition that we saw because you know the yeah. phoenixes died and then they were kind of useless which three of them so they were given away at some point you know other uh, if he was to do that again and like not have that bad of an engagement we would see that that power that we were talking about but he managed to uh he still managed to make a game out of it even though his composition was effectively like nullified well i kind of wonder too there's not a lot of VODs out there of Jokshi losing, if we're going to be quite honest, guys. He wins a lot. He's the king of Europe, etc., etc. And I wonder if Hurricane, like, did that specifically because that was a good build that he felt confident in, TVP, or PVT, rather. Or if it's because he knows that's one of the rare times Jokshi's lost games. That's a good question. Unfortunately, we don't see a lot from Hurricane. I don't think he's fielded that often uh, in Pro League. They have some other heavy hitters. They're always, you know, fielding out. So... Yeah, I, I, I don't know. Hurricane's always, like, he was on FXO, really, wasn't he? Yeah, Before, a uh, long time FXO ago. Disbanded. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, but yeah, he's always been, like, kind of, like, back there. Like, a Protoss, you, you're like, okay, I know him, but you, do you really? <laughs> I don't know. Well, one thing I really like uh, about Jaxi this time is he has gone for that Reaper. We talked a little bit about this last time. He's a very diligent scouter in StarCraft 2. One of the biggest things is uh, you can't hide information from this guy. Now we don't, uh, we do see the SCV coming here actually. One of my, f so describe this real quick, and you guys keep an eye on the mini map because I probably won't watch it in super duper detail. But you know, he'll send the Reaper and he'll bring the SCV with it. Guarantee safety. Then, sometimes he'll keep the SCV hidden around the third, come back in a little bit later, keep the Reaper alive for round two. Unfortunately though, taking a little bit of pepper on this Reaper and he's blocked out by this pylon. I don't think he realized that, so he is going to lose the Reaper. Ooh, nice, nice pick off there out of Hurricane. But <laughs> really good. You kind of uh, had to dive for that, though, right? Like, you need to see what the tech... Like, usually tech's behind the mineral lines or is over in this corner of the base. Thing is, when you see that as a Nexus down, the possibility of them oh. having something set down so fast as that was is unlikely. Ruh -ruh. Uh, yeah, he throws in a Twilight Council, uh, you know, almost immediately after the Reaper dies, so... Yeah, unfortunate. That's why you want to keep the Reaper alive. If it dies as fast like that as it did, that's just, you know, that could have been... Hurricane reacting to the Reaper death by putting a Toilet Council down. Very true, yeah. Now, Jakshi, okay, he's got a couple more needs in the middle of the map. These are actually not going to be so good to deal with that Stalker. They're great for the Mothership Quarter, of course, but not so much for the Stalker. That SCV, there's that timing. Mm -hmm. He always goes for like around that six minute timing. He knows this when the tech will already be down. So even if there's one Stalker at home to defend, it actually doesn't pick off the SCV fast enough, I think, unless it super kites, but. Uh, will he see the Twilight Council? Rallied. It's rallied. Oh, man. This is why this has to be so good. Also, pushing forward. This probably surprised Hurricane. It did. That soccer yep. is so low. That's why I had to run away. And he should scout the Twilight Council. And he'll see the <laughs> blink on it, too. Chrono Boost kind of gives away what's going on. And Jakshi now has full and complete ideas of what's happening in this game. Now, Marauders have already been started. Aww. What we do see is the Concussor Show coming out way before the stim. This is a little unfortunate because he's not going to have that stim to deal with the blink. But at the same time, like, ooh, actually comes up with that back with the Marines. Picks up a couple of stalkers ooh. early on like this. This is actually pretty big. He would love to go searching, I feel, for pylons as well. But more so, what he's going to do is he's going to force Hurricane to either delay the attack by another like 30 seconds or whatever, or he's going to get a lot of probe kills with this attack. Oh, something yeah. that pulses a lot. Mothership was on the wrong side of the map for this. 
Yeah, so he's still going to do this attack. The reason they got slow like that is because he did, was planning on doing an attack. He's still going to do it, maybe trade out some stalkers, at the very least probes, and then defend back at home with whatever the reinforcements are. I love how he's microing that stalker intentionally to keep these uh, stalkers in range of the marines. A couple of probes were pulled into this, and unfortunately they do a little bit too much damage to those marines. Uh, but still in the back burner, the key thing here is while he's losing stalkers, guys, killing three stalkers now is a lot better than being unable to kill three stalkers later on. Once that blink kicks in, we oftentimes see a lot of Protoss players retain stalkers to the point where there's like one or two away with like one HP and he just barely can't finish them off. Uh, but picking them off here on the other side of the map is fantastic for Jokshi. It's going to be just as good as defending them at home. The problem is, he also gives away a lot of his uh, home defense in the process. He's got some bunkers down, he's putting one up on the high ground, so he's, he's ready for this blink attack. But it's kind of going to be a, I don't know, a limp attack, I want to say. It's just not going to be that powerful. Oftentimes, a lot of people will feel the like the need to just like hole up and defend, and we've seen increasingly more and more Terrans, pro, pro Terrans, saying that that's not the case. You should attack if you, especially if you're planning already doing the attack that he did. It just uh, it's very effective cutting down the numbers because blink stalkers they're very snowbally. You already cut down like four stalkers. That's suddenly it's such a cool not move. as bad to deal with when they blink up. He knows that like after revealing the bunkers on the front, there's a chance that a blink's can come up to the high ground. So he's trying to hide his units, make it look a little bit less like he's ready for this. But the mothership core, uh, in range of that widow mine. Ooh, Actually, whoa, that almost kills a stalker <laughs> underneath the splash damage. This is unfortunate for yeah. Hurricane. But the nice thing is, this is before he's invested 20 plus stalkers. This is when he can still try and tech swap out of this. Because after you start the blink all in, it's an all in for a reason, guys. You don't recover off of it. There's no, there's no mid late game. You either win or you lose. Yeah, and you're right. Luckily, he didn't keep on warping in. He couldn't because the pylon was down. But, you know, it's good that he didn't try again because it was going to be well defended. And, of course, losing any losing that much health on a Mothership Core now, especially with the Vision Range nerf, it just, it uh, there's, like, so much risk in doing a, an attack with that Mothership Core as low as it is. So, was it, uh, Jachi. That the, uh, is that the Game of Thrones quote, too, by the way? Just thinking on it. You win or you die or you live or whatever. You play or you die. I'm failing on my references right now. I, I can't remember, but Jachi has identified that this is no longer going to be an all-in very, very quickly, in fact. So this is a little worrying. I mean, usually you get like another minute if they're really, really timid. And they're thinking, oh my god, I gotta defend, I gotta defend, or they don't hmm. scout. Yeah. And uh, that's, you know, that's not going to happen. Like, Hurricane, what does he have really back at home to defend? If Jachi just waits another medevac, and I guess that is what he is waiting for. The only thing he has to worry about is a small group of stalkers blinking back in his main, but they're so small that almost, depending on the reinforcements, isn't a bad idea for Jachi. Well, you only really need four to kill SCVs, right? So I think the idea is... Or no, no, it's, it's four for drones. Is it five for SCVs? I can't remember the exact count number, but you don't need all this many stalkers so to kill four. workers. Oh, nice scout on, or sniping that observer. Right, but like that's it's like the midway. It's not four to kill workers, but it's not like 15 to kill a building, you yeah, know? So. Oh, actually, you can catch a couple of medevacs. This is pretty big. Really nice snipes here out of Hurricane. Uh, of course, uh, you know, well, it limits the healing capabilities and whatnot. It also prevents drops from coming down to multitudes, which is really nice. As a Protoss right. player, your biggest fear is getting dropped in two places at the same time. Now, with only one medevac, Josh is no longer part of that opportunity. Jachi could have tried to sandwich them. Unfortunately, uh, missed the opportunity by having all the army in one hotkey, probably. Well, that but he's still going to do the attack. All right, well, this Colossus at home. I like the sentry warp ins. A couple of force fields could be really good here, but I don't know. I think I think Josh is going to see the force fields and probably just disengage, wait it out, and then come for a big storm fight after. He's got to be very careful. Okay, he scans ahead, says no thank you. <laughs> thank you very much. No, no, no. Uh, Observer here <laughs> on the front lines will give some detection to the Widow Mine, so they won't be able to get those free hits that we'd like to see. And you know, it's kind of cool too. In this series, like we've talked in the past about how you really don't see Widow Mines come into effect. You hear Koreans talk about how strong they are, but. Jokshi has been making pretty good use of them in both of these games. Yeah, solid, definitely. But as we saw, Hurricane's been, you know, still holding on. Just barely, but always holding on. Despite uh, losing six zealots to the three wood of mine shots or whatever. The resources loss isn't too out of uh, hand either, because you got to consider Jokshi's third isn't exactly at his third. He's still got to hold <laughs> up, uh, but as I say, that across. Oh, wow. Time. And Hurricane taking a very bold third, but if he, it's, he the sooner he gets it up, the sooner he's going to be able to get a cannon. Unfortunately, this drop going to go right past it. He can just drop... He can unload one medevac. They're two still going to the main. I imagine that's what he's going to do. He probably should just leave one Marauder. He doesn't mean to unload like a full medevac. <laughs> Maybe, yeah. Yeah. Look, look at that. Rifkin knows what's up. Uh, it's actually <laughs> too good. Anyways, what am I going to try and burrow? This is no... I don't think it's detection this time, uh, oddly enough, so it's going to get a pretty oh, nice hit front. off. 
Yeah, uh, goes for the probe lines. It's a lot of probes as well as a few uh, a few units, but the that really the attack at the front. Oh, he's not gonna be able to get the Nexus. That's just not enough Marauders. I think he will actually. I don't know. The Stalker's a little bit late to respond. Uh, the Colossus is coming a little too late. Just yeah. barely. Oh, I thought he was gonna get that. Uh, Legitsies. This one hammering away at the Nexus too. Uh, oh, the Observer. The Observer is going towards the third. You don't even need to go over there. There's no Wood of Mines over there. Okay, he finally remembers. There's a Wood of Mine in his natural. Did you get that? Oh. Take care of that. I didn't really see the Wood of Mine over here. Why are we standing on top yeah. of it? Well, hey, buddy. Hey. Well, actually, maybe he's forgotten. It's going to reload hey. and go on top of all these probes. You have oh, actually focus fires. This could be easily seven oh, kills. Oh, my God. They're also pretty, like, they're kind of oversaturated. Uh, oh, God. <laughs> Disgusting. <laughs> All right, so he's getting some pretty good hits off. He's getting some pretty good damage done so far. And Hurricane is down in probe count quite significantly. Now, granted, Chrono yeah. Boost can help you catch up on this, but you want to be using Chrono Boost on like your level two upgrades, on your extended thermal lance or your storm tech, whatever the choice may be. So it's a little unfortunate that he's going to be forced to use that on probes. Yeah, he managed to get one one out, even though he's only on one forge. But getting two two is going to take forever. Well, Joshi, of course, is already on his double engineering bay. Also, finding all the proxy pylons. That's one thing that Hurricane wasn't too Ooh. good at last game was proxy pylons around the map. You know, if we can give credit to one player who's really good at proxy pylons, Huck. Like, you can talk good, bad versus Huck all you want, but the one thing that's for certain is I don't think anyone proxy pylons as well as that guy does. On Frost, especially, you'll see them all over the map. Dropping the natural could do a lot of damage. It's fine to kind of a sweet spot, honestly, as well. Yeah, definitely finish off the Nexus, then go for the Forge. Oh, God. I was going to go for the Forge first, first actually. I, I kind of like this, because you don't know how close those upgrades are, right? That's true. But uh, gets the Nexus as well. He'll try and boost out of here. He'll lose one of the medevacs, unfortunately, but definitely worth it. Nexus and a Forge for those level 2 weapon denials is huge. Like, yeah, and brings the army back. Well, he doesn't have another Forge, actually. No, no, he was off, always on one forge. So that's going to take even longer to get those upgrades going. And this was a big problem for her again last time, too, where Josh had this massive upgrade advantage. Now, I don't often. Oh, sorry. Not often do you see her, uh, a Protoss player like not caring about how much gas they have, but he's starving on minerals right now. Well, uh, the other thing that's going to point out, too, we didn't get to talk about it before that engagement happened, but I really like the supply depot placement, because talking about proxy pylons, okay, there's not one yeah. here on the top of the cliff, but there's often one over here on this cliff in the corner of the map, and they walk over to your third base, but they won't actually be able to do that. They'll have to funnel through the middle of the map. There's some things that I always forget about, but even like when I'm casting, like, oh, it's so cool, I'll definitely use it, and then I forget, such as the supply depot's there, or the or mister the only being 99% finished, and then you only finish it when a banshee comes. Keep forgetting that oh, one, Yeah, too. I always forget about that one, yeah. The, um, the thing I really like though is like uh, before wood mines became more effective in factory and started getting utilized, you see the factory floated and landed over here as well, depending on the spawn locations. But uh, the another observer overkill. <laughs> There's so many Vikings. Luckily for Hurricane, again, Storm is like gonna finish as soon as he needs it because only Colossus is not gonna cut it right now. Oh man, I got quote fixed on Twitter by the way. Cersei departs with a chilling warning. When you play the Game of Thrones, you win or you die. There is no middle ground. Thank you, Philip Steven. Anyways, the Vikings go in for this engagement. Storm does get slapped down. There's not a lot of them, unfortunately. Uh, Storms, that is, but the Vikings still pursuing through this. And they're all being used in the Vikings, which means the bio army is still healthy. I can say they storm, actually. That's a pretty good one because he locks it in with the force wheels as well. Look at this well, high ground Vikings. <laughs> Lagos Vikings are great, but the problem is there's no charge on these zealots. So these guys are just getting awkwardly stuck with between nowhere and concussive shells. <laughs> it's a tough decision. What do you do? Charge or storm first when you're in this what? desperate situation? But I like this. Look at how he's holding on. He's still trading up pretty evenly. He's still got an arc on there in the back. This an army is on. so heavily stimmed. Oh, and thank thank goodness for that mothership core. That cannon is the reason Jachi Jigs up right here. Yeah. That could have been much, much worse here for Hurricane. He does have blinks, so we can chase down a couple more of these, but new, fresh reinforcements on the front lines. And, oh god, the upgrade still... I don't think he made another forge, did he? No. No. Oh, this... Okay, you know what? Hurricane could trade evenly. Hell, he could trade well for the rest of the game. But if he doesn't get past 1-1, one, one, there's no way he beats Jogshi, who's soon to be on level 3 weapon upgrades. Yeah, and not to mention, like, 70 supply up. Well, that too, but I mean, let's be honest, even if it wasn't 70 supply up, when you've got level 3 weapons versus level 1 armor, it doesn't matter what race it is. It's going to be a huge, huge boon going into the fight. Yeah, it's pretty good. Pretty good. Uh, Jachi just, you know, pretty much gearing up for all that he needs. In fact, he hasn't bothered making ghosts. I, I like that he's not waiting for that, even though they don't take nearly as long to wait for because they don't need the Mobius reactor. It's still, you know, an amount of time that you could just spend uh. winning the game. He can't save that base, and he can't save this one either. Storm's going to drive this army back, but this Nexus, 
Three Marauder is stimmed. A little too good. Yeah, it gets the cancel. He needs those minerals. Now he is starving on gas, though. Um, he did take a long time to saturate the third gases. That's what I was talking about in the beginning, and he actually saturated them incorrectly. Oh dear. Uh, the problem is, <laughs> yep, yeah, is gonna blink away. This is a scary army to run into. Every observer's been picked off so far this game. Jakshi just doesn't even need detection, it feels. A little too good. Yeah. But those storms actually get this army really, really low. Normally, Blink Stalkers can't fight this, but they're gonna one shot every single one of these Marauders. Well, now they're being healed up, so that's not the case, but. Oh, that Archon also not gonna get a chance to finish, sadly, for Hurricane. No, no. He's trying to get a Colossus out, trying to go Double Forge as well, but he just. He's running out of an economy, you know, his main base is mined out, again, really starving on that those minerals rather than the gas we're used to seeing. So he can't can't quite afford to get both of them. Well, he does right now, but that means that he's not gonna get any more High Templars, and he doesn't have any more Storms. He has two that are just about to have Storm. That's it. You know, it's worth noting too, just while we're kind of this midpoint, guys, uh, there is a loser's bracket to this tournament, unlike most Zotac Ops. This is one of the rare few times we do have a loser's bracket set up against this, so Marine Lord will fight the loser of this series. Uh. No so, more storms, EMP. GG. So I hope I hope Hurricane's ready for another TVP behind this. <laughs> but uh, congratulations to Jaxi. Takes the series 2-0. And we'll move on to fight the winner of uh, Hyun versus First.